Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about secure coding. Now see this video is important because I feel it's an ignored topic. Uh, I know you all are concerned about security but we are here we are talking about secure code. Uh, so let's understand why it is so important. See we are aliens right, our job is to solve real life issues. So of course uh, we look at the real life issues and then we try to find a virtual world solution right. So what we do is we understand the requirement and then we write a code for it. Now it depends you know how much experience you have uh, from where you have learned coding or what are the other technologies you have learned while learning a coding language. It can be I mean a programming language, uh, it can be C, C++, Java, JavaScript, PHP, Python, doesn't matter. What is important is when you learn a language or when you make an application, what is your mindset? Uh, so let's understand this. So irrespective of your experience, if you're a fresher or you have experience of 15 years in the industry, whenever you write an application, we have certain steps to follow, right? Uh, even before coding, we do certain steps, example requirements and all those stuff, but let's say you got the requirement with you and then you are trying to write a code. So what are the things which is going in your mind? So first step is understand the requirement and start coding, right? So you will take your keyboard and then you will run your fingers on the keys, right? It's as simple as that. Uh, and then depend upon experience as well, you know, the speed of your lines will change. And that's one of the uh, parameter we check, right? So nowadays, uh, not nowadays, but then from a long time, the performance of a programmer is used to judged by the number of lines of code he or she writes in that particular time uh, let's say in one hour how many lines of code you write i know that's a very bad way of uh, checking the performance is like judging a student by the marks but then i don't think that's the good way of judging a code right see we are living in a world of information right the most important thing is information now we have to secure data but then we don't think about security what we think about is just take the requirement and try to find a solution so you will take the requirement and you will type the code so the first parameter you have in your mind is it should work the thing which you do for your college work uh, assignments and uh, you know uh, the final year project but then once you get into real world, when you get into a company, of course, there are different parameters you have to observe. The second parameter is, of course, your code should work. So when you write a code, of course, that will be in your mind that this code should work. But also, you want to make sure that your code, your software is stable. Now, when I say stable, it simply means whenever a user is inputting a value. So your application is receiving some input from the user. If a user is giving wrong input or some input which is not, example, let's say uh, if you are asking for a file path, but then the user is entering something else, of course, it will give you some exceptions. And most of the languages have this concept of handling the exception. So you should know that when you write a code, you have to handle the exception. You have to look for the all the parameters or all the boundary cases, what mistakes a user can make. Uh, so you have to handle those exceptions. So two things, first your code should work according to the requirements and second one it should be stable. The next stage is, uh, depend upon your experience of course, when you write a code, you will be having one more parameter in your mind which is performance. Yay, I want to build an application which will be fast. Uh, example, let's say if you are going to a website and then when you click on a button, it something should happen, right? Uh, as a user, we don't have that much of patience, so it should be fast. Even if it takes some time for the server to respond, you need to do something to keep the user busy. Maybe show some animations or uh, you know, uh, tell the user something is happening behind the scene, but you have to do something. And even the response should be faster. User will not wait for more than three seconds. Uh, that's my observation. So those are the three things which are very important, right? The code should work, it should be stable, it should perform well. But the fourth parameter which we always, always miss, in fact, I have seen most of the developers don't even focus on this thing, which is writing a secure code. You know why we miss this? Because we all understand that whenever you build an application, it should be secure. But the only problem which I see is we imagine as a developer, as a programmer, we imagine that the security is not our concern. There's a separate team sitting there to provide the security. See, there are two things here. One is application security and second is secure coding. When you talk about application security, you are providing external security to the application. Something like, let's say you have a web application and you want to provide security. Maybe you will say, hey, there's a firewall. Uh, we are having authentication libraries. So maybe you can use, uh, you can verify username, password and all those stuff. Is it the only way to secure application? Yes, you know, uh, we need to control who will access the application and what are their uh, permissions, which are very important. But what we don't see is in your code itself, of course, when you write a code, 
there's always bugs in your application, right? And I always say this, and it's a fact, right? When you say debugging is removing bugs, then coding is adding bugs. Of course, in your application, you will be having bugs. We have to reduce the number of bugs. See, some bugs will affect the stability of the application. Some bugs will affect the performance of the application. And some bugs will affect the security of the application. Uh, so if you have a bug, your system is basically vulnerable. So you have to make sure that you don't have any flaws in your system. One of the way you can reduce that is by using smart packages or example, let's say uh, in Java itself, there are so many classes for the same thing. So when you compare two classes and then you, you say, hey, why we have two different classes for the same thing? Then your teacher will say, hey, one is faster than the other one. Of course, that makes sense, right? In the same way, when you talk about security, when you write a line, so let's say you are on line number five, this is a point, are you thinking about security? That's important. So even a simple keyword, you have to think about it. Is this code secure? When you try to print something on the console, you have to think about it. Is this code secure? So here we are not talking about the external level of uh, security. We are talking about the code which is secure. So when you write any line of code, make sure that you're not writing any code which will be vulnerable. So there are a lot of attacks which are going on, right? And then sometimes we, don't con we are not concerned about the attacks. Uh, example, there's a data leak somewhere. Every day you will hear some news. Uh, from this server, this many data got stolen and now they're available on dark web. Most of the news does concern us, but example, let's say if someone says there's a, a attack on Visa server and millions of uh, credit card information got stolen, you will be a bit concerned because money is important. Uh, example, bank account got hacked, you will be concerned. But if someone says, hey, uh, millions of personal data got hacked, you will not be that much of concerned. Someone says, hey, there's a medical data which got leaked. You will not be concerned, right? But we have to be concerned about those things because see, if you if credit card got stolen, you can block the old one, you can get a new one, you will get a new number. If your bank account is getting hacked, you can block the account. There are some restrictions, right? You can have a different bank account. What about medical records? What about your personal information. Nowadays, data is very important. So a lot of companies are paying to buy that data on dark web. So you have to secure user data as well. So even if you are not concerned about your data, you have to concern about the user's data which you hold. That's your responsibility. And by mistake, if you come under a GDPR Act, you will be fined. There will be a huge penalty and you might go to jail for not saving the, the user data properly. Uh, so you have to make sure that you write the code which is secure. Now, what are the examples here? Just to make you understand, of course, I can't teach you secure coding in one session. Uh, but example, let's say if you talk about SQL injection, it's one of the example of how can you write a secure code? You can stop SQL injection. Example, in Java, we use JDBC, right? In JDBC, we have a concept of statement to write the query. Instead of using statement, or if you can use prepared statement, if the values are coming later, it will make sure that it will stop SQL injection. You know, these things deserve a separate video. Uh, so there is OWASP, pronouncing it right. They mostly focus on the web application security. Uh, you will find the link in description. Uh, so there are top 10 issues which they have listed. Of course, there are so many issues available, but this is top 10. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, this deserve a separate video. So that's one of the things, SQL injection. The next one is what if whenever you send a data from server to client, is it secure? Is it encrypted? We don't think about those things, right? But make sure that whenever you do a transfer of data from server to client or client to server, is that data encrypted? Next one, uh, let's say if you receive a JSON from the client, and then of course on the server side, are you able to process that JSON properly? What if there's a command, there's a Linux command in that uh, JSON file? What if it is getting executed on the server, <laughs> right? Uh, so you have to consider all those things. There's also cross-site scripting. Uh, so you have to take care of that as well. Let me know in the comment section if you need a separate video on all these topics I will try to make. Uh, but what is important is next time when you write a code, doesn't matter is it for your assignments, is it only for learning a language? Make sure that you choose packages, you choose number of lines or the classes based on thinking about security. One other thing I forgot to mention, you know, most of the uh, application which we build, we use some external libraries, right? Of course, uh, if you say your project has thousand lines of code, uh, you can think about your project ha maybe having 10,000 lines of code, most of it coming from the libraries. So whatever library you are using, are they secure? Even if your application, your code is secure, the application which you are using might not be secure. So you have to think about those things as well. 
uh, we have this habit of using beta libraries don't do that uh, so yeah if you want to learn if you want to experiment it's completely fine but if you are building an application which will be production ready oh don't do that and always use a stable library stable versions and you never know when at what point you'll be uh, getting that issue so if you feel your application is secure completely you have they have done everything there might be one loophole in the application uh, something like this and the arrow will get hit directly at that point it will be disaster right so make sure that you build secure application by using secure coding uh, so that's it from this video i hope you enjoyed let me in the comment section and do subscribe for the videos bye bye